Hi, I'm Roisin Murphy on France 24, and I'm here to talk about my new album, Hit Parade, and my 2024 tour. She emerged in the mid-90s as one half of Maloko, the duo she formed with then-boyfriend Mark Bryden, creating iconic dance hits like Sing It Back and The Time Is Now. After 30 years in pop, the Irish artist is touring with her sixth solo album, Hit Parade, said to be her best yet. I caught up with her at the end of the European leg of the tour, and she started by telling me about her memories of performing in Paris. I remember one specific time when I first went solo and I was touring an album called Ruby Blue and I couldn't believe the reception that I, that I got. This was kind of when I suddenly realised that I had attracted a quite an insane gay audience to, to my work, you know. They were hanging out of the you know, out of the ceiling. It was dripping the place. I remember distinctly feeling like this, this is it. This is, this is the sort of audience that I need that's really, really appreciative of what I'm doing. Well, they certainly are. Paris's Olympia was the final date yeah. of your European leg of your tour. Yeah. Do you still enjoy it as much as you ever did? Oh, God, yeah. I love it. I absolutely live for live music and for performance and... It's, it's really been the reason why I'm still here, I think. I mean, I make these interesting esoteric or electronic records with these kind of maverick producers, and every record kind of represents a different era and all that. But if I couldn't bring that to the live, then I don't think I'd still be here talking to you. I've worked with the same musical director all the way through, even from Maloko. His name's Eddie Stevens. And he's able to take these weird records that I make and transport them into a band. To think about just you and me, a small town mentality. Murphy's Law, I'm gonna meet you tonight. Just one that will light the fly. Well, you are a showwoman. I've got to talk about the outfits. They're absolutely yeah. incredible. You're, at, you're celebrated by fashion houses, especially here in Paris. They even use your music for models to walk down the catwalk. Yeah. Where does that sense of style come from? Uh, I've always been an exhibitionist, but it sounds like that's not an egotist. That's a different thing, I think. Even as a kid, I used to dress up in my aunt's 60s uh, wedding dress and um, freak people out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like to go out on the street Dressed as the, I get they call it cosplay now. That I was that I was that kid, you know, that really wanted to live in a fantasy and would use myself to create the fantasy or to create the exhibition. The fans love you so much. I was looking at some of the comments on YouTube. I picked out a couple. This woman is high quality whiskey that just keeps getting better. <laughs> Every couple of years, we get a sip, and damn, it's delicious. That's one of them. Another one. That's a good one, isn't it? The new songs are masterpieces dressed as a cool breeze of hope and joy. Oh. How do you think you managed to get such a good, positive fan base? There is not a cynical bone in the body of my work, you know. There's no um, sitting around boardroom tables in record companies before I make records saying, OK, what will Roshi Murphy do next, you know? My work comes out of the way that I live. And it, it did right from the beginning, you know, when I started in Maloko, I sort of fell into it from the way that I was living. So I met somebody in a party and I was saying something stupid. I was saying... Don't remind us what it I was. I was saying, do you like my tight sweater? See how it fits my body to everyone. <laughs> and I said it to the right person. And he, that was Mark Bryden. And he had a big studio actually called Fawn Studios uh, that was empty that night. And he invited me there to record saying it and we fell in love and then we did a few tracks like that and we ended up with a record contract long story short from there I kind of learned to sing I learned to perform I learned you know there was no going to stage school for me or any any of that it really was just I live and then work comes out of the way I live 
people um, always look back, people my age especially, at Maloko and those hits um, with a lot of nostalgia for those clubbing days. How do you remember those times? Oh, they were magic, you know. I was never out of nightclubs. Now I don't go at all, uh, especially in the last few years. Now I'm much more interested in other things, you know, like staying healthy and walking in the countryside and <laughs> boring stuff like that. The music still excites me. And I think the electronic music or dance music really has embraced first many new technologies and always been a genre that is at the vanguard or the forefront of ways of making Thanks. music because what it tries to do is find a way to make people dance. And in that pursuit, it'll try anything. Tell us then a little bit more about Hit Parade. That's the album that you're on the road with. It's your sixth. Critics are saying it's your best ever, your most successful album. How do you describe it? Really out there in the cosmos. It sort of goes all over the place in, in terms of genres. The producer that I worked with, uh, DJ Coase, is extraordinary. It took six years to make this record because he really thinks deeply about every sound that's in every one of those tracks. But mostly he thought about my voice, I think. I mean, he really prioritised the way that my voice sounds on this record. Talk about the lyrics then. There's a lot about mortality in there. Really sorry to hear that you lost your dad when you completed it. How much did his illness sort of play on the on the creativity of the record? Not well, not really. My father had Parkinson's, but he never let it show. You know, really, in terms of it was never depressing or anything to be around me. Dad, he was an incredible character and full, full of life right to the very last. Um, he actually died of an accident. He didn't end up going the full way with the with the illness, so in some ways this was a, a, a great gift that he gave us all and himself. So no, not really that. I mean, I guess I'm, I brought up Catholic, uh, in a Catholic environment. My parents weren't practicing Catholics, but Ireland was a very Catholic environment as I grew up, because I lived in Ireland first until I was 12 were Irish and then moved to the UK with my whole family when I was 12. So there's some poetry to that way of being brought up. And I think also writing through the pandemic might have affected that. And that the sense of if you think about death then you live stronger, you know? It wasn't a negative sort of thinking about mortality. It was a positive thinking about it. It was like live now each, every moment, every day. You recently turned 50. How are you feeling about life? I feel great. I mean, I've never felt... I've never felt physically stronger. I've been working out for the last two or three years. I've got a great trainer. I'm not going to tell you who he is because he'll get bombarded. <laughs> but because every time I get my muscles out on stage, apparently all the girls in the audience go, oh, my God, what's she doing? I need to do that. <laughs> but yeah, I never really was into it before, but I've done a lot of strength training in the last few years. And I feel great for it. I love dancing and I love performing and I love singing more than ever. So all these physical things, I'm very, I'm very strong at the moment. I think, you know, having had two children as well, it's just a massive, everything's a bonus. Like if you have two children and you have a career, I mean, this is incredible to me. You're not brought up to believe that things could still be this good when you're 50. 
And that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's just nice. the best thing. You've got this massive following on social media, millions of views on TikTok. And what did you make of your track, um, Ramalama Bang Bang, becoming this viral sort of challenge on TikTok? Well, Ramalama Bang Bang is a weird one. I mean, it's, it is a weird song. It, before it was a TikTok sensation, it was an internet sensation anyway, because it got picked up years ago by a very famous choreographer in, in America. And they had a pro TV program called So You Think You Can Dance. And he did this like zombie group dance routine to Ramalama, and it became really famous. And all these little dance groups all across America started to do their own dance routines to it. That became something that was on YouTube. So even before TikTok, it had already taken off. It was a weird, a weird anomaly. But that song, it was on my first solo album. And uh, yeah, it's had a life of its own, even though it might be the weirdest song I ever, I ever made. So there's a real ironic thing to it. I wanted to ask you about something that happened um, on your private Facebook earlier this year. You wrote something related to the trans debate. We won't talk about it, we won't go into it. And it got leaked and there was this backlash. How do you cope with that sort of negative negativity, that sort of backlash that sort of blew up on the internet? It wasn't that bad, honestly. The internet wasn't that bad. Um, I didn't get this sort of, you know, death threats or anything like that. I got a lot of support. I had like three or four people ask for tickets back. So it really wasn't terribly bad. I don't think what I said was seen as massively, massively um, difficult, you know, for people to understand where I was coming from, at the very least. So it wasn't, it wasn't so bad, and I'm, I'm still here doing the best tour of my life, I think. Go on then, tell us, how are you feeling about the next leg of the tour in the States? Oh, fantastic, yeah, I mean... I'm getting into areas that I've never been in before. You know, also I did a, a South American tour this year and I'll hopefully go back there before we're finished. There's an expansion going on of Roshi Murphy, which is, again, you know, something I'm really grateful for at my age. It's unbelievable. OK, well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.